Hello again, college football fans. It is Wednesday, November 24th, Rivalry Week, and I am so excited. It's the most wonderful time. Yes, it is. Oh, boy, and we're going to start off nationally. Uh, Bedlam, I think, is probably the most interesting game to pay attention to. I mean, I know that the the game, Ohio State and Michigan, is, is big, but, I mean, it's not interesting because it's basically a de facto uh, playoff game. The, the winner of that will move on to the – Big Ten championship game, probably against Wisconsin, and they'll probably win, and it's probably going to be Ohio State. So that's what I have to say about that game. Um, Bedlam, if if the Big 12 can get a one-loss champion, I think they're in the championship no matter what else happens around the country. Whatever happens in the SEC championship, whatever Cincinnati and Notre Dame does, if Oklahoma or Oklahoma State can win that game and then win the, ne- the game the week after – which will probably be a rematch of Bedlam. Um, It could be against Baylor, depending on the scenarios that happen over there. It's either going to be a rematch of Bedlam or it's going to be the winner versus Baylor. Um, But if they can get a one-loss Big 12 champion, they're in the playoffs, no questions asked, and they will jump over Cincinnati. I don't care if they're number four right now. You know that's what will happen. But... um, uh, another big game to watch. Obviously, you got to watch Cincinnati every game they play from now on. Uh, they're playing East Carolina this week. It's going to be a tough game for them, I think. Uh, I think it's going to be tough for Cincinnati to get through unscathed. And uh, Notre Dame is obviously going to be watching that. They're playing Stanford. I don't think there's any chance of Stanford making a push against Notre Dame. But, uh, you know, if, if Cincinnati loses, then Notre Dame is a player. But if Cincinnati stays undefeated, I don't think Notre Dame is a player at all. So those two are kind of tied at the hip. Uh, obviously, the Iron Bowl is huge. You're going to get your own special video about that, trust me. Uh, but that's probably the big national implication games going on, the, the games of consequence nationally. Uh, and uh, going to move on to the uh, conference now. Uh, it's rivalry week there, too, starting off with the Thanksgiving special that everybody loves, the Egg Bowl, Ole Miss at Mississippi State in Arkansas. This is, if not the most anticipated, one of the most anticipated Egg Bowls over there, I'm sure. Um, and, you know, we've talked about it a little bit. I think Ole Miss has kind of sputtered a little bit towards the end. They're, they're it almost seems like they're winding down a little bit on offense. It just doesn't have that uh, explosiveness, that overwhelming explosiveness that it seemed to have early in the season and last year. They're still running the ball as good or better than anybody in the country. Um, but Matt Corral in the passing game has definitely slowed down the last half of the season. And uh, Mike Leach, on the other hand, and Will uh, Rogers and the Mississippi State offense just continues to amp it up, and it looks like Will is getting more comfortable in the air raid offense every week. And it also looks like Mike Leach is getting more comfortable utilizing the air raid in the SEC each week. And uh, I think that Mississippi State's defense is better than Ole Miss's, even though they put on a whale of a performance against Texas A&M. But that's a... And the funny thing is, as I would have said a couple weeks ago, that even though Ole Miss's defense isn't that great, their strength is probably pass defense and uh, not run defense. But they proved me wrong against Texas A&M because all Texas A&M really had was a running game. And, uh, you know, Ole Miss shut them down hard and fast. So, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a a toss-up game, but I'm going with Mike Leach and the Mississippi State Bulldogs because they're at home and because of, you know, it seems like the momentum is in their favor a little bit in the last part of the season. And uh, I like them winning that game 35-27 to over the Rebels. Missouri at Arkansas, this is the battle line something or other. I mean, you know, I guess I think they just created that because Missouri is new to the SEC championship and they wanted to make the last game a rivalry, so they gave it a name. And, you know, good for them. I think this is going to be a wild one. Uh, I think a lot of people expect Arkansas to just run away with it, especially with it being at home. But uh, Missouri's got a lot of momentum in, in their, at their back going into this one, a lot of wind in their sails. And, uh, I, you know, I've, I've sung the praises of Tyler Beatty all, all season long, and uh, I think he's going to have another good day there in Fayetteville. Um, but I do think Arkansas is going to come away with the win in a wild one, uh, and I like 
I like Arkansas in this one, 31 to 28 over Missouri. Uh, Georgia at Georgia Tech, going to be a complete whitewash. And here's something that I haven't heard anybody else mention. Uh, if and when Georgia wins this ball game, uh, they will become only the third Eastern Division team since the SEC was broken up into divisions. Only the third Eastern Division team to finish a regular season undefeated. The only other two before them have been the 95 Florida team, which got destroyed by Nebraska in the national championship game that year, and then the, the 98 Tennessee team, which went on, went on to have uh, an undefeated, the only undefeated national championship from the East since they've broken into divisions. So uh, that's quite a, a noteworthy accomplishment for Georgia. I mean, the West has had tons. Of t Alabama's done it, you know, twice that amount uh, on their own. And then, uh, you know, plenty of LSU and Auburn's done it a couple times. So that's pretty uh, pretty interesting for Georgia. And, in, and the score in that one, you know, I like them 50 to 10. Keep it nice and round numbers. Uh, they shouldn't have any trouble running or throwing or doing anything they want to do on offense. Georgia Tech won't do anything. As a matter of fact, I'm probably giving them way too much credit, giving them 10 points. But it is a rivalry game, and it is in their place. So we'll go ahead and give them a little charity. <laughs> so 50-10 to 10 Georgia over Georgia to Tech in that one. Florida State at Florida. Wow. Speaking of those old days, you know, 98 Tennessee, 95 Florida, uh, this game, this rivalry game has really lost a lot of its uh, gravity and, and, and cachet going into the last several seasons. But uh, I, I don't think Florida State's won this one in a while, and I think that's going to change because obviously Florida is uh, a disaster of epic, purport, epic proportions. And uh, Florida State seems to be a team that is, you know, at least trying. They, they haven't put forth as serious an effort to come out of the basement as Tennessee has this year, but they're in that same kind of vein. And I expect them to come away with the win in this one, and I expect that to be 24-14, to uh, 14, Florida State over Florida in that one. Uh, the Iron Bowl, we will uh, have the, our own video discussing that. Uh, Vanderbilt at Tennessee. Tennessee. I think is about to take Vandy behind the woodshed in this one. Uh, I just don't see Vanderbilt being able to stop their offense. Um, and I like this one. Final score, 49-20. to 20. Tennessee closing out the season with a rivalry victory and a lot of momentum. Because let's face it, beating Vanderbilt has been sort of a tall order for Tennessee over the past few seasons. And uh, But I don't think they're going to have any trouble with them this year. 49 to 20, Tennessee over Vanderbilt. Texas A&M at LSU. Uh, this is an interesting game because of the way LSU has played since they've come off of their bye week and they've thrown caution to the wind and they've started blitzing just about every play on defense and really making it tough on the opposing side offense, but they just cannot muster hardly anything on the offensive side of the ball. And, um, uh, I feel like Texas A&M and Jimbo Fisher are just going to be too strong for LSU to overcome. Uh, it'll probably be another ugly, low-scoring game the way LSU's had uh, their last couple. And uh, But uh, I, I do believe that the Texas A&M running game will be able to get enough to get enough points in this one. And uh, I think it's going to wind up being, uh, like I said, low-scoring and ugly. So I think I like Texas A&M in this one, 21 to 14 uh, over LSU, and it'll be Ed Orgeron's uh, last game, obviously, if that happens. I don't know if he'll coach a bowl game if they happen to be able to pull this one out. I don't know what the arrangements are for that, but uh, I don't expect LSU to be able to pull out the win. And 21-14. Uh, Clemson at South Carolina. Now, this is probably going to be my big upset, pe upset pick of this week. Um... I, I didn't pick uh, East Carolina to beat Cincinnati, but it is an upset watch game for sure. Um, but this one, I'm picking South Carolina to win. Uh, I think Clemson has been treading water a little bit. I know they've 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 started to look a little bit stronger the last few weeks, but it's against uh, ACC opponents, and I just don't I don't give them a lot of stock because of that. And uh, I think South Carolina's got much the same way as Missouri. Um, but unfortunately for Missouri, they do have momentum behind their back, but they got to go on the road against a good conference team, SEC team. 
But South Carolina has got their rivalry team, and this is a real rivalry with real tradition and real roots. And uh, the Palmetto State is going back to the Gamecocks this year, I think. They're going to win in a shocker. Uh, Walk-off field goal is my prediction in this one. 38, or, no, sorry, 31 to 28, South Carolina over Clemson. Uh, and we'll see if that works out. I got to be bold this week because that one week that I decided to be conservative and only pick favorites, I got hammered. So I'm going bold this week. South Carolina over Clemson. And the last one, we have another ACC-SEC old-school rivalry matchup. You got the uh, Kentucky-Louisville game. And this is Kentucky at Louisville. Uh, Louisville has been coming on a little bit later in the season. They did not look very good against Ole Miss uh, to start off, but uh, they have gained some momentum. But I don't think it's going to be en enough because Kentucky is 8-3 and three in the SEC, and they are handling the business that they should be handling. Uh, people can make an argument that maybe Mississippi State should have been a win for Kentucky, but Mississippi State is uh, one of those pretty good SEC West schools, and I don't think anybody in the country wants to face any of those guys. So you can't fault Kentucky for that. I like this one. It's going to be another low-scoring game. Kentucky's defense is going to step up big in this one, and they're going to hold Louisville to only 21 points, and they're going to manage to score 28 on the other side. So I like Kentucky 28-21 to 21 over Louisville. And that is your Rivalry Week predictions uh, from me. And stay tuned because the Iron Bowl prediction and preview extravaganza will be coming up soon. Thanks for watching. Have a happy Thanksgiving.